Okay, let's see how it's come out. That's actually really impressive. These look so cool. Hey, how's it going and welcome along. I'm Rory from Rate My Funeral. That was Rate, by the way. So welcome to this. It's not a tech review today because I've already reviewed this. This is a tech project thing. So I'm gonna 3D scan an object and I'm gonna 3D print it and see how it all goes together. So this is the mole by 3D Maker Pro and they sent me this a little while back and I did a review for it. <gasps> to be fair, it's not that exciting yet. It's just the phone. <gasps> the unit itself, which is really cool looking. Overall, I thought it was pretty decent. I, I got some pretty decent results from the tests that I did. You can, if you put the effort in, get some really good scans out of it. So I thought, let's have another go with it. Let's see what else we can do. So first of all, in the video last time, I had real trouble opening the clips. And the reason is because you have to push in and then lift. There's a technique. Anyway, ready? Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Literally the same gag. Just to remind ourselves, in here we have the mole itself, which is a decent little robust scanner. We've got a turntable. We've got all the necessary leads and we've got a tripod. And that is all we need to get up and running. Let's start. So one little adjustment I made was I'm using my special cable tidies to keep the cables all nice and clean. Makes a world of difference, such a simple thing. And there we go, that's all we need to do to get set up and ready to run. Now, what am I going to scan? I've got this little doggo here. So <laughs> I nicked this from my mum and dad's garden. It's quite a cool little statue, it's got a broken ear, poor little thing. So you never know, it, it could get broken at any time. So I wanna preserve him forever. My idea is I'm gonna 3D scan him, 3D print him, and then I can make millions of them. Okay, so he goes onto our rotating desk and now we need to get into the software on the PC. Now you join me over here in the software and here we can see we've got our scanner showing the, the footage from the scanner. We can see our little doggo rotating and spinning over here. We need to find a good spot. As you can see over on the left, it shows if you're too far or if you're too close. So you've got to get that sweet spot. Now, because of the shape of him, he's a bit, Longish. We need to be a bit dynamic and move in and out a little, but it's fine. We'll, we'll figure this out. So we're going to start off. We're going to get one that is relatively a straightforward scan, if that makes any sense at all. So we're going to start off. Let's start here. Okay. I'm just going to gently move it just to make sure that, like I said, it's it's staying on him while it gets the kind of first pass, as it were. Okay, so that's getting his face. This is kind of like the, the scan for the top down element. So I'm just now gonna raise up above him because I wanna get the top of his head in. Don't wanna move too quickly because we don't want this to lose its tracking. But to be fair, this is pretty good at keeping it. It's not, it's not bad at all. So I'm just gonna get a bit of his uh, side in there. As I say, this one is all about the details looking down on him. And something I do like to do is get in as much of the base as possible into each of the scans because it's quite easy to remove and fix that. What we're going to do is scan more than once and it's then going to try and join those scans together to create one model. And it needs reference points from both parts. So the base is a really good way of getting consistent reference points. So that is now building our first scan. So there he is. And as we can see, the top is pretty good. We're just missing some of the stuff down the bottom here. So what we're going to do is press append Get this into position. I want to stay quite low here and I'm gonna say scan. And now this time I'm gonna get all the undersides. I wanna try and get underneath his head, as well, under, under his chin, if I can. It's quite difficult to get under there. Make sure we don't move too fast. Get some of that base in. Get all the back. Make sure we're nice and low for this pass here so that we get all that sort of underside and the mid rift. Make sure oh, we've lost tracking. We've lost, there we go. We've got it back again. Right. And I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to make sure I've got in some of the head. Right. Let's see how we get on with that. So I'm going to stop that. Okay. So that's two scans and they seemed like they went pretty well. What have we ended up with? Right. Okay, now that's good. So that's got all the, the lower stuff. We've still got the big gap under his chin. I might just give it one more try. I might just stop him spinning for a moment. And I'm gonna do a 
a dedicated one just to try and get under that chin. So I'm going to pull him this way a little, pen, make sure that we're seeing plenty of him. Where, I can't even find him. There he is. Here he is. All right, start scanning. Make sure I get plenty of the head in. Oh, we lost it. There we go. We've got it back. Okay, so we've got plenty of this. As I mentioned before, I want to get quite a bit of that base in, just so it knows where it's all sitting in 3D space. Okay, good. And now I'm going to come down here and look under there. Come on, stay with me, stay with me. You can do it. There we go, there we go. So I'm going to stop that. Hopefully all three of those together will give me everything I need. Right, well, we've definitely got some information under the chin now, so that's really good. And I'm gonna turn all three on and we end up with some kind of weird Cronenbergian nightmare. And with a bit of luck, if I just press align, because all three are visible in the aligned items, the automatic alignment should find all the areas that match, put them together and align it all up so it can become one mesh. Okay, so it says finished and even though it looks kind of a bit crazy, it's just showing the overlaps of where each, each one is their own color, you see. And it has aligned everything beautifully. So this is good. We've got some extra stuff we don't need down the bottom, but I am not worried about that at the moment at all. So we now need to process this. So we're gonna say over here in process, remove noise, repair. I'm not gonna worry about simplify for now. Texture we're not worried about, so I'm gonna hit process. We need to give it a name, so we'll call it Dugo, Doggo, Doggo, yes. And we'll let that save the project. And then it asks, you know, what ones do we want to utilize? So we're gonna use all three. I'm gonna put the refinement into the middle just cause that's probably a happy medium. And we're gonna press apply. Now this will take a minute just to do everything it needs to do. But interestingly on the alignment, there's two options. You can use the automatic, which you just saw me do, or you can use a manual. So if the automatic has trouble, which could happen, you can utilize the manual option where you have colored dots. It's just simply a case of you have two models open, you right click to place a dot, and then you right click on the other one in the same spot and then that's how it knows the alignment. But if you're lucky and the auto works like we just were, then it's great, you don't need to worry. And a quick thank you to our little model here. Well done, Doggo, good boy. Right, so we've done main processing. We're on to removing the noise. Then we do the repair of the model. This will fill any holes and anything that's kind of a bit weird. Should hopefully sort out for us. And it's asking, do we want to export it? So I don't want to do that yet. I want to have a look and look at that. Oh, is that not absolutely beautiful? It's pretty much perfect. Even under the chin is spot on. There you go. How good is that? Brilliant. Right, now that we've done that, we can now save this out. So I'm going to go ahead and do file and export, reorientate access. I'm going to do this because what this allows me to do is choose where it's going to sit in, in my bed. Now it's just like one extra step that we just then don't need to do. So we can just rotate that and we want to move him up here. There we go. Right, so he's now sat nicely. Now we'll go to export again. We won't worry about that this time. We'll just press apply. This is now going to ask where we want to put it. It's going to save it as an STL file and we'll call it doggo save and there we go we're now ready to jump into our slicing software so you join me here this is the Prusa slicer so this is the software that comes with my 3d printer and this is how easy this is we drag in our doggo into the scene and there it is that's at full scale that's the exact size of it in real life i could actually print it at full size the first thing i want to do though is get rid of this base so i'm going to use this cutting tool bring that down and find the exact right point ah we're not quite straight yet so there's one other thing i want to do is there we go so is make sure that he's definitely straight uh, on the floor right okay good and now we'll there we go right okay i'm going to start with there i don't want to keep object b so i'm going to cut that like so. So that looks really good. And I'm just gonna leave him at full size for the moment. I probably won't print it at full size because I think it's gonna take quite a long time. I'm just gonna rotate him so he's a bit more interesting on the print bed as well. Now he is going to need supports. We're gonna turn on supports for the build plate only because I, I only wanna support the chin. I think everything else will probably be okay. It's just this chin. So I'm gonna come into print settings and I'm gonna change the support material to organic and then i'll go back i'm going to add a support it's always a decision do you do a support blocker or do you do a support enforcer and we're going to do a support blocker in this case so we're going to we're going to make this bigger uh, let's find the right one of these is the right angle there it is right okay i'm going to rotate that so that it's in line with him like that okay so only his chin is exposed you see let's go slice Oh, I don't like the way it goes up into his eyes. It looks a bit 
kind of creepy, doesn't it? Ah, so we've got 10 hours, yeah. So, so that big, it, it will just take a little bit too long. But I also, I want to tweak the support material. Right, okay, just a little bit of tweaking. <laughs> so I literally, I got it down to the point of, we just need one box, which is an enforcer there. Yeah, there we go. That should, in theory, print him quite well. So if we just scroll up, so this is how it will print. It will come up like this. That, that bottom bit should all align quite nicely. It then just grows out. Nothing to worry about there. Then that's where the, the chin starts and hopefully we'll just be able to pop those supports off. And there we go, we've got our dog, brilliant. And apparently it will take two hours and 51 minutes to print. I'm now gonna export that onto an SD card, put it inside the printer, let the printer print it. Maybe we do a time-lapse or something. Do you wanna see a time-lapse? Let's do a time-lapse. <music> And there we go, that's that one done. This is the 3D print, it's come out pretty well. Let's see if we can get the supports off the beard. And the supports broke off pretty easily, so that's really good. Now it's not the best print ever because I used the big nozzle and this filament wasn't very good. This was kind of old filament that I had in the cupboard. So I kind of feel like maybe I need to do this again. Also, I'm curious, did this scan this at exactly the right size? Hmm. That's what we need to find out. So I'm now gonna print this again, but at full size. Time lapse. Okay, let's see how it's come out. That's actually really impressive. This looks so cool. Check him out. How good does that look? That is the full size version and that looks so good. <laughs> and there we have our doggo printed full size. Comes off nice and easily. We've got a few supports to remove. I just get a little pair of snips in here. There we go. Right, supports are off. To be quite frank, that has come out insanely well. The print quality has come out really well. And check that out. They are both exactly the same size. They have all the right details. You could paint this one in the same colors as this. And just by looking at it, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It's so cool. It's so good. Good doggo came out really, really well. Oh, I love it. So there we go. Three little doggos, two of them basically the same, one a little bit heavier than the others. The mold did a really good job. It got me a perfect replication of this, created this. And you know, if I decided to put this into 3D modeling software and repair the ear, I could print out a version that hasn't got the broken ear. The possibilities are endless. And that will do us for this video. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a good fun little project. If you've got any ideas for more, stick them in the comments and I'll have a look. That'd be great. If you enjoyed this video, remember hit that like button. If you're not subscribed already, hit subscribe and click in the little bell will let you know when I release a new video, which does happen occasionally. Until next time, bye for now.